One, if we could please introduce ourselves up here. Leslie Hervey, interim clerk. Alicia Reese, vice president, Hamilton County Commission. Good afternoon. I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehouse. Jeff Aluto, County Administrator. Thank you all so much. And I am Stephanie Summerall Dumas, president of the Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners. Um, let's get into this. Uh, as we always do, we start uh, with a silent prayer and a pledge of allegiance when we uh, complete the silent prayer, if you would. Amen. Amen. If you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Samara Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reed. Yes. Commissioner Dreham. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a few presentations to uh, present today. Um, we've taken pictures earlier, so I am going to get started um, with the presentations. I just want to say um, my chief of staff uh, alerted me about two months ago about a young man who was an excellent student and on pace to pass LeBron James Ohio High School Athletic Association scoring record. He said long ago that we needed to wait. When I say he said, my chief of staff said, we needed to wait because we're in the middle of acknowledging other like uh, Black History Month and things like that. Other things were going on. Well, we wanted to wait to honor this young man because we figured this would give him time to accomplish even more goals and receive even more honors, and he did. So at this time, I'd like to ask Paul McMillan to come up to the podium uh, and ask his mother, father, and any siblings who may be here to also come forward. And I am going to, he's a, he's a shy young guy of not a lot of words, but uh, I thank you all for coming. And his family has always supported him in his endeavors. So I will read this and then I'll present it to you. Whereas Paul Dan McMillan, the fourth, was born October the 20th, 2003, son of Paul D. McMillan III and Amy McMillan. And whereas before Paul the fourth was one year old, he would drag his toy basketball hoop across his parents' floor every day. He started playing basketball at three years old and went to his first basketball camp at five years old. And whereas Paul, a student at Woodward High School, has made straight A's, I'm gonna read that again. Whereas Paul, a student at Woodward High School, has made straight A's from first through 12th grade and will graduate with a GPA over 4.0 and has been declared valedictorian of his 2022 high school class. And whereas Paul surpassed NBA great LeBron James Ohio High School Athletic Association scoring record, Paul had 2,658 and LeBron James had 2,646. So he kind of moved him out of the way and he went into his place, but he's also a very uh, accomplished uh, star. And he was named Ohio Player of the Year by Gatorade and his and is the number five all time leading scorer in the state. I'm just so excited about this. I can, and whereas Paul has been recognized by Ohio High School Athletic Association for all Ohio first team division two in 2020 and 21, second team division two in 2019 for district 16 four time first team in 19 through 22 for all Southwest Ohio three-time first team, two-time triple-double prospect player of the year. He was also named Cincinnati Metro Athletic Conference Player of the Year from 2019 to 2022, Player of the Year runner-up, 2020 first team, 
2019 through 2022, averaged 25 points per game or more as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, and was three times CMAC league champion from 2019 through 22. Cincinnati Enquirer Division, two player of the year from 2021 to 2022, favorite to win again. Division two, first team, and it's worth reading all of this because it, it took a lot to accomplish this, that's, that's for sure. 2019 to 2022, and he's favored to win that also. Now, whereas Paul's most recent awards and accomplishments includes District 16, Division II, Player of the Year in 2022, District 16 Division, First Team 2022, Southwest Player of the Year 2022. Remember this young man, everybody's in, in here and in his presence because he is going to do great things. And I lost my place, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, Southwest First Team 2022, City of Cincinnati leading score for 2022. He received a proclamation from the city of Cincinnati acknowledging his 2,000 points scored accomplishment. Will finish number one for scoring in the Cincinnati public schools history. His team has won sectional and district championships for 21 through 22 and played for McDonald's All-American, top three candidate for 2021 to 22, Mr. Basketball, top 100 national recruit, and top 20 point guard for 247 sports, named one of the top 22 players in the state of Ohio for 21 through 22 season by Gannett Corporation, Max Preps, junior All-American, honorable mention 2020 through 21. And whereas Paul has received offers from several Power Five programs, including Louisville, Dayton, Kansas State, Purdue, Penn State, Mississippi, Cincinnati, Xavier, and Arizona State. Therefore, now be proclaimed that the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners honors Paul Dan McMillan IV for achieving excellent success in high school scholastics and sports. And we wish him much success in his future endeavors, be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, does hereby proclaim the second day of April, 2022, as Paul Dan McMillan Day in all of Hamilton County. So everyone you meet on that on that day, you say, this is my day. So yeah, yeah. So uh, if you'd like to say a few words, you're certainly welcome to do that. I'm extremely emotional right now. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for, you know, allowing me to have this day. Not a lot of kids can say they have this day. Not a lot of people, not a lot of grown people are allowed to say they have this day. So I just want to thank you all. I'm, I'm lost for words. I'm emotional right now. I said I wasn't going to get emotional when I get up here, but <laughs> they end up not happening. So just okay. thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Would your parents like to say anything? Would you like to say anything? Uh, we would just like to say thank you from our family. Uh, thank you to Bishop Hill. Thank you, President. Um, Ms. Alicia Reese, Vice President, uh, Ms. Driehaus, uh, just thank uh, the whole staff uh, for recognizing Paul. You know, it's been a lot of years, a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, um, a lot of battling with me, a lot of battling with his coaches to make sure that uh, he got everything he need uh, on and off the court. Um, a lot of a lot of persistent uh, hard work, a uh, lot a lot of uh, grinding in the classroom uh, with, with his with his his peers as well as his siblings, uh, thank you to my wife uh, for making sure that he's always doing what he needs to do uh, from an academic standpoint. Um, thank you to Cincinnati Public Schools uh, and them th that, that whole district for allowing him to be the player that he is, thanks to his coaches at Woodward uh, and his old coach that was at Hughes 
uh, for allowing him to be and develop into the player that he's become and the person that he's become. Uh, and last but not least, like, not least, we just like to thank God because through God, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Proclamation, but can I see a few of your moves, sir? No. <laughs> uh, okay. You want to come to the gym? I got you. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. Right. So we will move forward. Um, we have a, a few more uh, proclamations to go through. Um, okay. Vice uh, President Reed. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam President. And uh, Paul, don't go anywhere. I want uh, this next uh, honor that I'm getting ready to do. I want you to come up afterwards. I uh, want to thank um, everyone that is here today. And we wanted to do March Madness um, I'm an ex-athlete myself. I got an ankle injury now, but I think I got a couple more jump shots in me. Uh, but coming up through athletics, uh, an athletic family, and uh, it's hard to get to the top. It's hard to get to the levels and keep the grades up that these young people are doing. It's hard to get to a state championship. Um, I played for Withrow. We got to the Southwest Regionals. I got a chance to be all Southwest Ohio and, and uh, lead the state and assist, but we didn't get there. Um, so I wanted to have something today that would highlight the young people that's doing something right. We go too fast, too quick. When they do something right, we hit a little blurb and we kind of move on. Uh, we want this to be shared and social media to go on and on and on these accomplishments that these young people are making because the majority of our young people are doing it right. I also want to acknowledge all of the coaches that participate and help us help our youth. I know, and the principals, I know uh, at Woodward, uh, Mr. McMullen's principal, Dr. Melinda uh, Tubbs Wallace, want to thank her. I uh, want to thank, I see, I know one of the coaches, Dr. Eric Abercrombie is here uh, from Woodward. Thank you for being here uh, as well. Um, and I want to also uh, say to, uh, our county, not only do we want to present these proclamations, we are opening our first Hamilton County Office of Youth Development. And not only do we want to have jobs and we want to have training, uh, but one of the things we want to do is also make sure that our student athletes in Hamilton County, I want to see more of them get scholarships. I think everyone on the team, there's a school out there. There's a college out there that needs them. And uh, we want to focus on pushing that effort as well. The more can go to school for free, the less the parents have to pay, and they can take their skill set to the next level. So this is really what March Band is about, to celebrate the accomplishments, but to also highlight uh, the positive and to also show that we want more of our kids in Hamilton County getting scholarships, going to school for free to take it to the next level. The next person that we'll bring forward and each of us, um, uh, you know, will read this. I recommend it, but I think all three of us should read the proclamation on these next ones. So I'd like to bring up. I don't have, I don't have it. Oh, you don't have it? It was, yeah, it was, it was your nomination. You have it? Uh -uh. You can share. Yeah, let's share. I have where you will be saying something. So we'll make sure. I'll pass it to you. I have to read my part. Um, I would like to, next is KK Bransford. Whereas KK Bransford is a National Honor Society student athlete at Mount Notre Dame High School. She first played basketball at five years old because her brother played and she wanted to be like him. She is the daughter of Brian Brasford and Johanna Brasford. And whereas KK Bransford, Bransford has been named as the 2022 McDonald's All-American for a second time for her outstanding athletic achievements in basketball. She just got back from Chicago playing at the McDonald's All-Star Game. Whereas KK Bransford has been named Miss Ohio basketball for a second consecutive season. She is the sixth, yes. 
She is the sixth player in Ohio high school basketball history to win consecutive Miss Ohio Basketball Awards and the second from Greater Cincinnati. Whereas Kate transferred top league Mount Notre Dame to one of the more dominating four year runs in Ohio history. She led the Cougars to a pair of Division I state championships in 2019 and 2021. She also led them into the Final Four in 2020 before the tournament was ultimately canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas KK Branchford also earned the Ohio Gatorade Girls Basketball Player of the Year Award in 2021 and was a three-time Girls Greater Catholic League player of the year. And whereas KK Bransford finished her prep career with 2,174 points, 723 rebounds, 418 assists, and 262 steals. She also ranks ninth in Ohio High School Athletic Association history in free throws made, which is at 540. In the 2021 Division I state title game, Bransford scored eight, I, I want to say it like Ransford, like over there, <laughs> scored eight of her 21 points in the second overtime to help Mount Notre Dame get past Newark 57 to 55. That game gave Mount Notre Dame the most girls state basketball titles, which is eight of any program in Ohio. And whereas KK Bransford has a long list of awards and accomplishments, among them include receiving a gold medal as a member of the 2019 USA basketball women's U16 national team and being rated as the number one guard in the nation for the class of 2022. She has been named as Max Preps All-American. She is also a leading scorer and leads the league in assists, field goal percentage, and steals. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners hereby congratulates KK Bransford for her exceptional athleticism and award-winning achievements in basketball and in the classroom. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners declares and proclaims that Tuesday, April the 5th, 2022, be known as KK Bransford Day in all 49 municipalities throughout Hamilton County. Well, I would just like to say thank you to you all for giving me this day. And um, I just couldn't be more happier. I couldn't be more honored to have this opportunity. And um, I also want to say thank you so much to my family. Um, having a support system is really big for me. And um, that's how where I am today is how I got there. And um, I just want to say thank you to my coaches, uh, my teammates. To have that support system is means so much to me. And I wouldn't be here without them, so I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you. Okay. Now, I would like to ask her if she could, uh, I'd like to ask her, Paul, they could just stand there for one second. I, I know we... We always rush, I know we rush it through, but it's too much bad stuff for the young people. I want to give these two right here, academic on point, athleticism on point. This is the leadership that we're talking about. And she's got her McDonald's jacket on. So give them a round of applause for us. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to add, these two played on the same basketball team, co-ed basketball team, at, as when they were youth. So third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, they were on the same basketball team. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, and you were the coach. <laughs> that, that is awesome. I, they got to help me. I'm training. Willie Cunningham has challenged me to a free throw uh, contest, and I got to get ready. So y'all help me. Next, we're going to bring in the state champs for Sale Marion. So packed in here, we have to bring them from the back as they are coming. As they're coming in, we'll start with their proclamation. Whereas the players of Purcell Marion High School girls basketball team fought hard 
to maintain a successful 2021-22 season to reach the Division III state championship game, including a win over Belmont Union Local 59-43. to I saw that game. To advance to the state championship. Whereas on March 12, 2022, the Cavaliers achieved victory 62 through 30 to 38 over the Worthington Christian Warriors in the Ohio High School Athletic Association Division III Girls Basketball State Championship game to win the Division III title. And whereas head coach Jamar Mosley and the entire coaching staff, team, members, parents, families, faculty, student body, and the Purcell Marion Cavaliers community were integral in guiding the team to victory through their unwavering support. And whereas Hamilton County is very proud of the Purcell Marion High School girls basketball team for their strong finish and successful winning season. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners hereby congratulate Purcell Marion High School girls basketball team for a victorious season and commends the team on winning the Division III state championship. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners declares and proclaims Thursday, April 7, 2022, to be known as Purcell Marion High School Girls Basketball Team Champions Day in all of Hamilton County. Right there, coach. We want you to say something. <laughs> you want to say something? Oh, I just want to. Well, first off, I would like to thank Commissioner Reese and everyone in the room for uh, for having us here. Um, you know, these ladies, these young ladies uh, kept me speechless this entire season. Um, I was just talking to uh, Mr. Fuller and that on October 12th, the girls uh, set a goal of winning the state championship. And they can tell you what my goal is. My goal is just to get better every single day. Um, 73 practices and 28 games later, we were crowned state champions. And I just want to let them know how proud of, uh, of them I am. And again, thank you all for having us here. Thank you. Next up, have high school state champion. Such a proud day, I tell you, such a proud day, these young people. So as Purcell leaves and Taft comes in, uh, this one is also very special. Um, my mother, um, who passed away from breast cancer, this is her alma mater. Um, before she passed away, she never missed. So I know she's looking down and very excited today. Whereas the players of Tav High School basketball team fought hard to maintain a successful 2021-22 season to reach the Division III championship game, including a win over Cleveland Heights Lutheran East, 56-43. We love to beat Cleveland, to advance to the state championship. And whereas on March the 20th, 2022, the Senators achieved victory 48-45 to over the Ottawa Glendorf Titans in the Ohio High School Athletic Association Division III boys basketball state championship game to win the division three title. And whereas head coach DeMarco Bradley and the entire coaching staff, team members, parents, faculty, student body, and the Robert A. Taft Senators community were integral in guiding the team to victory through their unwavering support. And whereas Hamilton County is very proud of the Taft High School boys basketball team for their strong finish and successful winning season. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners hereby congratulate the Tav High School boys basketball team 
for a victorious season and commends the team on winning the Division Three state championship. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners declares and proclaims that Wednesday, April 6, 2022, be known as TAF High School Senators Boys Basketball Team State Champions in all of Hamilton County. We have the principal, and I don't know if the coach wants to also say something. Coach, if you come down and say something too. Um, as they're coming, let me. As they're coming, let me also say that this was a tough comeback. Last year, they left with tears of disappointment. They got ready to go, got busy, and this time they left with tears of joy with a state championship, teaching them how to come back when sometimes life doesn't go the way you want it the first time. I would just like to thank um, the whole city of, of, of the... Uh, Take your time. It's okay. Take your time. I would just like to thank the whole city of Cincinnati for standing behind us. It was great support. Um, Ms. Murphy just been unbelievable. Her and her whole team up at the board, Josh Hardy. I would like to thank my principal, Mr. Badgett, and my AD. Um, so um, thank you. And hey, our revenge number two will be starting pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank our commissioners for honoring our young men today, our coaches. Thank you guys. It's been a great season. So thank all of our coaches and our young men. You guys did this. So thank you. And if I can say something, uh, if I could say something, and yeah, the city of Cincinnati certainly supports you, which is about 300,000 uh, people, but this, the county of Hamilton County, includes 500,000 more. So it's over 800,000 people that we have come forth and said that this should be your day because we respect you and we love you. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, principal, thank you, Principal Badgett as well uh, for being here and all the principals. Uh, let's get these kids scholarships. Let's get every kid a scholarship. That's what I want to do. Next, we have Mr. Ozzy Davis, our last presentation for March Madness. Okay. Okay. As soon as I find my paperwork on Ozzy. I see you, girl. Here we go. Coach Ozzy Davis III is a proud resident of Avondale and has, been a pa has a passion to mentor and help youth in the community through organized sports and community activities. His efforts have helped many youth turn their lives around and make better choices to become the best they can be. Whereas Ozzy served on the Cincinnati Public School Board in 2018 and is the co-founder of the Avondale Youth Council, which is helping hundreds of youth. And whereas Coach Ozzy is the founder of the Queen City Youth Development Program, a program for 13 to 18 year old inner city student athletes, which have amassed over 150 scholarships for his alumni. And whereas Coach OZ serves as the sports editor for the Cincinnati Herald and Cincinnati's African American Weekly. He also hosts Spirit of Sports TV show and podcast. And whereas Coach OZ, is the husband of Beverly, who is a saint in everyone's mind, and father of Ozzie Davis IV. He graduated from Walnut Hills High School in 1983 and Miami University in 1988. He earned a Master of Applied Science degree in 1991 and his Juris Doctorate degree from Indiana University in 1994. Whereas Coach Ozzie Davis III motto is to spread more love in our community. 
He continues to show this by his lifelong commitment to helping hundreds of youth accomplish great achievements through sports and by steering them in the right direction through his mentorship program. He also personally ensures that no youth are left behind due to financial hardship and all have access to uniforms and proper equipment. Now, now therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioner as we declare and proclaim that Monday, April the 4th, 2022, be known as Coach Ozzie Davis the Third Day in all of Hamilton County. No, that's the uh, that's the NCAA championship day. So I'm excited about that. You all invited. <laughs> you all invited to join us at Wing Champ uh, on Sharon Road for a celebration. Uh, we were celebrating the championship day, but it's now going to be we're going to celebrate Ozzy Davis Day. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just want to real quick. I, I had an opportunity to stand on the floor of Congress uh, back in 2010 with uh, your your brother and, and my my good friend, and I thought that was like the honor of my life. Little boy from Avondale standing on the floor of Congress. Well, for some reason, this is way more special to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, King Paul IV, man, starting that get soft stuff, man. I, all morning, I said I was not going to cry. At least she ain't going to get me. She ain't going to get me. <laughs> but when I got up here, I started thinking about all these kids mm -hmm. and how y'all took the time to honor these kids like never before. Mm -hmm. Like never before. It's never been done before. I've been around a long time. We're entering our 25th year at Queen City. I want to thank Tim Johnson, uh, our director, who's here today for, um, you know, putting up with what you got to put up to. And then I want to thank our alumni that are here today, Paul McMillan, uh, Jarrell Redden. Uh, without you guys, there, there is no us. We, we, we really appreciate what God is doing for our kids. Two state champions. Uh, both black schools, Purcell is a black Catholic school and we know Taft is a black school and, and I'm, I'm down for black progress. So when y'all see me, you know, don't talk to me about number black. That's me. Everybody got something to do. I do black, all right? So um, I really want to thank you. Uh, we want to thank the Lord and, and we want to encourage you all to continue to uh, recognize our children that are doing well. KK, you're supposed to be on the show Monday. So make sure you get back from Louisiana. If I got to send an extra jet, let me know. I, uh, I, I'm really, really grateful. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. So Dan, Pastor Dan, I forgot. Our boss, Pastor <laughs> Dan is back there, our boss. Uh, and I do not want to, I cannot go further without recognizing my spiritual guide, Pastor Dan Larkin, uh, who is also a member of our youth development program. Thank you. Madam President. I just, uh, I just want to thank you, uh, Madam President, for the time that we took today. I think it was very important uh, at a time where we just see a lot of negative and these young people with the grades and everything, and you see uh, alums that go further. Um, and I just do want to recognize um, Brendan Elliott, who's here, he's six foot eight in the back, uh, went to Kentucky State, played on the uh, championship team at Kentucky State with my brother, and also worked for me when I was at City Hall. And, he came up through a lot of these programs and I just wanted to, and now he's at University of Cincinnati. He used to be the uh, one of the uh, directors of discipline at Xavier University, has his master's degree. This is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. We talk about success stories. So just wanted to recognize Brandon Elliott, uh, who's in the room. And so you, we see six foot eight, you know, he played somewhere uh, and what he was able to do. So this was just great today to be able to honor them. And I wanted to honor Ozzy because he's the guy that gets a kid that might be on the wrong track and he takes them in and say, let me turn you around. He gets a kid that's hungry and say, let me get you something to eat. Let me put you with organized sports. A lot of the coaches he's trained that came up through there. So I just thought it was so important. A lot of times we overlook people that do that type of work. So this is just a great day. And I just uh, thank you for the time. Madam President, may yes. I just yeah, I, I want to thank Commissioner Reese and Commissioner Dumas. Uh, this has been fun. Uh, who doesn't love March Madness? Um, I, too, played athletics in high school. Believe it or not, I was on the volleyball team at Seton High School. That gives you an idea of how good we were. We weren't very good. I'm five foot tall. Um, but but athletics plays such an important role in so many kids' lives and in adults' lives. Uh, and so Ozzie Davis is the perfect example of somebody that builds kids. 
Uh, and I know you know a lot of these kids, Ozzy, and they are products of your positive attitude and your ability to build, build, build kids. And the, to the coaches and the ADs and the parents, thank you for all that you're doing because as Commissioner Reese says, these kids are the future and we are very proud. I am personally very proud to have recognized each and every one of them today. Thank you. Thank you. This is absolutely a fantastic day, a wonderful day, awesome day. We always sit up here and pass laws and look at policies and where we're going to, going to allocate monies, but the best investment are young people. Well, some of the old people like Ozzy. Uh, but uh, that's right. <laughs> but um, when we thought about it, uh, as I said originally, uh, Paul came up because he was breaking, so Paul McMillan came up breaking so many barriers. And, and then as we looked at other um, sports groups, breaking uh, records. We certainly wanted to include all of them. And we talk about the past. So I was a semi-pro softball player. I did pretty good. I, <laughs> I played on the Jake Sweeney team. So we all have a past, don't we? Um, but I just want to thank everybody for coming. It just really warms my heart, gives me chills um, that we see and we talk about the young people that are not doing well and doing some of those negative things, but there are so many more that are doing great things. So thank you so much. I'm going to move forward actually, and I thank everyone who's here that wasn't necessarily here for this purpose, but, but you stayed and you're here and I um, apologize somewhat. Uh, for being a little late, I know you thought it would be 115, but this I, I'm sure that you guys uh, understand the importance of it. So I'm going to move forward. Normally, uh, the commissioners will give their comments and motions, and we're not going to do that yet, but I'm going to go to public comments. I'm not sure what order they're in, but I'm going to start with C.J. Carr. Okay. Well, let's just um, open up the public hearing then. This one is not. Okay, Stephen Pryor, you have a. a okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. I'm at the commissioner office. I'm excited, Ms. Denise Driehaus, Stephanie, Miss President Dumas, Vice President Ms. Leisha Reese. We got the prosecutor over there, Cool Michael, and Jeff, I see you. Put it, put but uh, that's good, y'all. Y'all looked out for the youth today. Y'all should get them a street sign now. A street sign somewhere in, uh, down in the West End for Tab for, for being state champs. And the young ladies, y'all should get them a street sign. That sounds good, don't it? Don't it? They know it sounds good over my left. A street sign would be nice, y'all. And I'd like to say something about, I heard on the radio, when the mayors and Jeff Birdie went down to Florida, they didn't take none of y'all. Y'all should quit giving them money then to build garages. And then they trying to keep the, the money too. So if they didn't take y'all, Miss Denise Driehaus, y'all need to talk to them next time. Don't do that. That is wrong. Y'all keep giving all that money to the FC Soccer Stadium and they're not including y'all to come. Y'all make choices for them. So that's not right. Not at all, Ms. Denise Driehaus. Let them know that. Called up Jeff Birdie and say, look here, we need to come to these meetings down in Florida. Alicia Reese, council member, I mean, council member, for Commissioner Alicia Reese, Ms. Stephanie Dumas, president. Y'all need to start checking them. Put them in place. Y'all doing y'all job for the people. Do it thoroughly. Administration, y'all got to reach out to them too. Let them know, no, include us. Y'all keep giving away millions, millions for them, for the stadium. They get an opportunity tax zone break. I know about all that stuff. I done study real heavy. But uh, make sure they include y'all to this, y'all. Street sign, a street sign for this, these basketball teams, these state champs, because it's important. Because the, the, the other youth behind them will see, like, hold on, we can get a street sign. Guess what? We can get one, too, and they'll feel great about it. Mm -hmm. My name is Stefan Pryor. I love y'all and nothing y'all can do about it. Y'all can't do nothing about it in here, all right? I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna move uh, forward for our public hearing. 
Uh, we have several uh, comment cards here. I'll start with uh, CJ Carr. Is okay. Okay, I see he's sitting on the edge of his seat. Can I make a motion to open up our public hearing? Second. Second. Sir. Commissioner Summers. Yes. yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. We have our engineer here. That's okay. We're not perfect. People need to know we are not perfect up here. We're not, I'm not trying to be. So uh, everybody's uh, excited today. That's yeah, I know. I know. Yes. So we have yes. our engineer, Eric Beck, is here to give a a few I'll, I'll give a quick introduction here. Good afternoon, commissioners. Mm -hmm. We're here today for a public hearing to consider the, the request to vacate a portion of Willow Road in Sims Township. A petition to vacate the right of way for an unimproved, unmaintained street right of way was made by the adjoining property owners, the Knights of the Golden Trail. Per Ohio Revised Code, Section 555304B, this office has reviewed the request and followed the requirements of the code. Sims Township was contacted and asked for a resolution either for or against the vacation. The Township Law Director sent correspondence to this office stating that the Township would not be offering an opinion either way. We proceeded with the vacation process, which included the following. Notification to the petitioner in writing of the requirements of the vacation to which they agreed to in writing. All public utilities were notified and allowed to make comments. The record survey plat of the proposed vacation was prepared for the petitioner by a licensed surveyor and lists all necessary easements that are required after the vacation. The viewing and hearing dates were set. A viewing date of March 23rd and a hearing date of today, March 31st, were set. The adjoining property owners were notified by mail uh, more than 20 days prior to the hearing. And a legal notice was run in the Cincinnati Inquirer for two consecutive weeks. Uh, the survey plat and description will be submitted on item one on the board's regular agenda. And today's proceedings allow us to hear any public comments regarding the proposed vacation so that the Board of County Commissioners can act on the request. So I'm okay, so thank I'm, you so much. I'm here to answer any questions after the comments. Thank you so much. Could I, get, could I just ask you, Andrew, could you just expound a little bit on why the township trustees didn't take a position in this case? I'm really not sure why they took a, that position. They felt that it, um, the original parcel they felt was a DBNA dedicated but not accepted. Therefore, they actually went to the Ohio Attorney General's office and asked for an opinion whether the township whether this was a township action or a county action. And based on the legal review, it's been determined that it's a county action. It's county property, county right of way that would be dedicated. Therefore, it's the commissioners to act upon that. Mm -hmm. Did this issue come up maybe about a year ago? Um, this issue, this was originally presented to us in mm -hmm. 2020, but I believe okay. there's been discussions about it prior to that as well. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Could you just point out for everyone's benefit what exactly we're talking about? Is it the property in the dark black line? That existing parcel and the individual parcel here are both owned by the Knights. This portion right here is the portion that yeah. the request to be vacated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and that's, cur you that's currently just a wooded area. There is no roadway there mm -hmm. at this point. Okay. Okay, thank you. CJ, <laughs> you could come on up. Thank you. CJ Carr. I know I'd get up here eventually. Yes. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Uh, to start off, I, I object to the vacation of Willow Street. I would like to give a little bit of background in the neighborhood and the roads in the neighborhood. Uh, 19, 1924, the plat was filed. Let me for just, uh, and I'm, you'll get your two minutes, but I just wanted to let you know you get two minutes. Okay. okay. In 1924, the plat was filed for this neighborhood. The plat for the roads was dedicated and accepted by Sims Township trustees on May 26, 1924. The commissioners adopted a resolution in 1947, which listed a portion of Willow in that resolution. 
1949, township trustees made and passed a motion to request the county commissioners to accept and dedicate the balance of Willow Road from Cedar Drive to Shore Drive, which again is a section that's in question. In 1958, the Hamilton County prosecutor wrote an opinion that states that all the roads in the Loveland Park subdivision are township roads and are on the plat was recorded in a manner and form prescribed by law at the time and therefore constitutes a statutory dedication of the streets therein. In 1958, Sims Township trustees unanimously agreed to rebuild Shore Drive. Shore Drive was not in this 1947 resolution. Shore Drive was established, according to the engineer's office, by the prosecutor's opinion of 1958. In 1988, a letter was sent to the Loveland Castle uh, about the street where Sims Township stated, Shore Drive is a public road owned and maintained by Sims Township. In the early 1990s, Sims Township took control of property, noted on the plat as park property, and the township stated that the township owned the property per the acceptance of the plat of 1990. 24. In 2006, Resolution G06-26 was approved by Sims Township trustees to vacate three undeveloped portions of paper roads in the town in the neighborhood, um, just like this one. Mm -hmm. The trustees have decided to hide behind this opinion of the Attorney General. The roads are based on a dedication and acceptance of 1924, the neighborhood plat, which followed the law at that time and continues acknowledgement being a township road by Sims Township trustees for all these years. The county prosecutor says these are dedicated and accepted roads. The roads meet the criteria of the attorney general's letter that they have been dedicated and accepted road by statutory dedication. Therefore, I'm requesting this hearing either be continued until this matter can be properly sorted out or the petition be denied until Sims Township trustees can follow the process outlined in the Ohio Revised Code for vacation of streets and give us the residents and property owners the opportunity to speak to our local trustees in a public hearing on this issue. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I have this documentation to back Sorry, up. You can give it to the clerk. Uh -huh. Jeff Forbes. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Jeff Forbes. I'm the law director for Sims Township. Um, and I'm only here really just to say that, that Sims Township does not have, uh, we don't have a position on this based on the attorney general opinion that was provided. We determined that the portion of Willow Road that's requesting to be vacated is not a township road. We only have any involvement if it's a township road. And based on, based on the information we got from the attorney general, uh, and our review of the records, we determined it was not a township road. Therefore, we don't really have a role in this. This is the actual body that is the appropriate body to hear uh, on the vacation. So if there's going to be a public hearing, this is the appropriate place and this is the appropriate venue. Mm -hmm. So just in case, we really didn't intend to speak today, but uh, necessarily, but just we wanted to clarify that because we know the board received a lot of communication and we were copied on that as well. So we just mm -hmm. wanted to be clear. Our, our position is that we don't have a position and that this board is the appropriate board to handle this matter. Thank you thank for you. the clarity of your position anyway. So thank you so much thank and you. representing Sims Township. Uh, David Hope. No, okay, no, okay. So uh, Joseph, Corey, Carey, okay. Well, thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they write things down in the years, a uh, hundred years ago and everything like this. And along the way, new people come in and the laws and things get changed and everything. And the attorney general come down and said, the, it's useless. The property is, you can't use it. You can't build a road on it. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing but honeysuckle and, and dead ash trees up there. And we don't plan on doing nothing that this all started with the bees. We had to get the lots consolidated so that we could have our bees. You can't have bees on a 20 foot lot, even if you own the lot next to it. So we had to consolidate it on this board's recommendation. Now they said, oh, there's this road that's over a hundred years old that's on paper and it's never been used and it can't be used. Fill out the paperwork, Joe, and we'll take care of it. 
Uh, the attorney general agreed with us and here I am. Mm -hmm. It's, we own both property on both sides. The attorney general said these laws that you're trying to talk about that was handed down in 1918 and 1929 and everything have been superseded over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this all started over the bees, gang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, 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 I just said, uh, it's went this far and everything and it's up to you to uh, take care of it. It's, mm -hmm. There's no parking lot. There's not gonna be anything there, uh, hopefully, maybe some plants for some bees and that, and that's about it. And we're just here because we're following your advice. We've done everything that you told us to do. And now we're here. Mm -hmm. so, I remember, uh, so, I remember that uh, discussion about the bees when you guys were here before. So, yes. okay. Well, thank you very much. I okay. will uh, appreciate you coming and being patient. Um, are there any other comments on uh, zoom or anything like that? Because we did get some comments via email, and we have that that we will be putting uh, in the record. So um, at this point, I will ask uh, Vice President Reese uh, if you have any other questions or Commissioner Driehaus as it relates to the comments that have been given um, and whether or not you know we need to close uh, the public hearing. Yeah, Ma yes, Madam Chair, I, Madam President, I do have a question for um, Mr. Beck. For me, I think it would help just having like that timeline. I mean, we don't have to go back to the 1800s because, um, but just kind of the timeline, because just from that testimony, sometimes you do get caught into some things like that. I know um, myself coming from a small business background, uh, they tell you go fill this paperwork out, and then you open up another problem, you know? Everything was fine until you go down to the, the government and they say, fill this out. And then they say, well, OK, you did that. Now fill this one out. OK, now you've opened up, you know, uh, a problem that I guess since the 1800s wasn't a problem. <laughs> no one knew it was existed. So I think for me, it would help being, you know, a uh, timeline because this is my first time, uh, you know, interacting right. with this. And then second, there were some things said that, um, it's not Sam's Township. They wouldn't have a town hall. It would be us. I just need to know how that all plays. That would help me have a better understanding. But it just seems like a, you know, uh, it just, from what I'm hearing, it just seems like it's an innocent, you know, nothing malicious situation uh, with uh, a road that only exists on paper, but not in real life, I guess. Well, to answer your first question, I do not have all the dates in front of me that were, were stated by Mr. Carr. I don't have all of those. Um, I mean, later, not yeah, now, but yeah, I'm saying I'm say, something I, that I don't have those. Yeah, 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 not we, now. We will later. have those. Um, one thing that, you know, he stated that laws change, but we have to base it on the laws that established that subdivision at the time it happened. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether the laws changed after that. And I don't want to speak for the prosecutor's office, but that's what I'm not an attorney. So, but we have to base it based on, based on the laws at the time that, that the subdivision was accepted, okay. not can, the current laws. Okay. Well, can you just quickly tell me what's the problem with the beat? I don't, I, I, I don't understand. I have no idea. Okay. I mean, okay. the engineer's office, all we did was look at the property and the plats, not the reason why they were doing it or the, the intent right. of the future development of the property, if there was any, that would come up later if there was any zoning process. Okay. So yeah, all we looked at was the parcel ownership and the vacation process for the Ohio Revised Code. Gotcha. Madam President, it just will help me. I don't know who we got, all of our administrators, prosecutors, legal ease to get a total picture. Like what created this problem? what legally is the issue um, and that would help me as far as going forward because I he gets up and talk about the bumblebees or whatever I'm trying to understand what got us here and he was right. saying that former commissions asked him to go get this paperwork which involved you now right yeah they, they have now followed we got the a correct problem. process they've they have followed the correct process to do the vacation they have followed that so they, they did do every step that was required. Okay. I just want to know what, why did they have to do this for the bumblebees? I'm just, I don't know. So that's where we would need yeah, I, the administration. I, Madam President, um, and I, I would defer to the applicant for the vacation 
uh, for right. the answer to that question. But my my understanding could be wrong here is that that has to do with the proposed use, perhaps, of the Correct. property. That they're the amount of area that they need to to put the bees up, the, the hives they're on. They're looking I would to assume. do some some high some hives and some mm -hmm. gardens or something, from my understanding. And that that's why they were looking to do the vacation. That's is that, is that correct generally? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah. Oh, honeybees. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I, it, I apologize. It was, it, it was the the purpose of the vacation was to create enough land in order to have that particular use. That's my understanding. Correct. Gotcha. Contiguous piece of land. Correct. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So, Eric, the summary that you gave initially when you came up to speak, um, I don't know if you sent that to us, but if you didn't, if you could send, be glad send that, that summary, because that clarified for me lots yeah. of issues uh, that I had as it relates to our authority as of Hamilton County versus Sims Township. And then, um, so that was very helpful. I will get I that to get Leslie that. this yeah. afternoon. So, uh, Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, so um, I have a question for the first speaker, um, because whether or not it's it's under our authority or the township authority, I am unclear as to why there's objection to the vacation to begin with. So could you further clarify? I understand your position about where the authority lies, um, but I'm not clear on, uh, as it's been described, the vacation of this property to, con it sounds like it's green space now uh, with plants. They want to put beehives on this land. I am unclear as to why that would be a problem. The township started two years ago with the. If you uh, can speak up because they're interpreting back there. Yeah. The, the township started two years ago with the uh, zoning map for the township for the updated um, map. They tried converting this property to for future use as uh, scenic river commercial which is what kind of started everything. Scenic River Commercial in the middle of our neighborhood. The castle then surveyed this property, came up with 4.97 acres, which is that large chunk. Vacating a road would allow them to be over five acres. Five acres then changes the to agricultural zoning. You can have bees on this size lot without vacating the road. The five acre point actually changes the zoning to agricultural regulations when they look at things like that. When the township started this land use map update and the commercial zoning issue um, came up, that's where the concern of, okay, now Willow's open, Willow's flat on top. It's been years trying to get buses and, and bigger events down at the castle. Mm -hmm. This is a direct access, perfect place to put a parking lot, perfect place to do this and that, and additional access through another section of the neighborhood to get down to the castle. That's where all the neighbors, you know, everybody was talking and everybody got up in arms at it. The whole point of this is we as neighbors, and I know some comment cards have been sent in. In 2006, when these other three sections of roads were vacated, they're the same issue. Paper roads never built on the same plat in the same neighborhood. Township had a resolution, wrote up a resolution and submitted it to the county commissioners. All we're asking for is to be able to speak to our township trustees, our elected officials, get up in front of them, voice our concerns to them personally, our direct issue of what it is, have them follow the Ohio Revised Code, which even in the attorney general's letter, he spells out, it's a stat, all this information that the, the uh, Hamilton County Attorney General said, or Hamilton County attorney, Prosecuting Attorney said, this did meet the laws and requirements of 1924 for an ex dedication and acceptance of this plaque. The State Attorney General says it's based on the time and the laws of that time, which again, it meets that. So again, we're just saying that Ohio Revised Code says it starts with the township. The township has a public hearing. The township adopts a resolution, and then it's moved forward to the commissioners. We just want that opportunity to speak to our local officials on this issue before it comes before this board for you guys to, to put your signatures on it. So it is the objection that you anticipate a road going in on this property? What could be done 
on this property in the future, which would adversely affect us as property owners on the other end of Willow Drive, on the top end of Willow Drive, because that could become another access into this property. Could we put the map back up, Bridget? I don't know if that's possible. So all, so the, the to the bottom, or the, I guess it's the south, um, that is owned by the Knights of the Golden Trail, right? Correct. And then as you move past the vacated portion that we're talking about with all the individual plots, are what are those? That's owned by the Knights of the Golden Trail. All right. So the Knights own both the property to the north and to the south. Correct. Where are you located? I am located in the upper left corner farther down. I see. Willow. Willow continues out to Rich Road, which is in a county road. So Willow comes into our neighborhood off a of rich road. I see. The, the, the existing pavement ends just below Cedar Drive here. Okay, so, so again, the concern would be that, what is it, increased traffic or can- Increased traffic, coming? buses. I'm just trying to get to the traffic. idea of why the neighbors would be, be objecting. I, whether it's in front of us or the trustees, it, you know, I, I'm just trying to get to the nut of it. Right, and, and that's the big, what can be done. Once this is done and once this is all one parcel, and then again, the agricultural zoning comes in. It, it may be a parking lot for the castle, but would, maybe it's a parking lot for the beekeeping process. Would the agricultural change and the change in the zoning then require additional hearings if the Knights it's, were to want to build a road? It's not a zoning change. It's the, the defined definition. I'm not sure what word to use. We, we, are, we are zoned currently C residential. But the Sims Township, and I believe Hamilton County Zoning Code, allows anything over five acres to be an agricultural zoning, which allows different scenarios to happen with that agricultural, which in this case, the bees would be the agricultural turnkey to make it from residential to an agricultural district. Okay. Not really a zone change, though. The zone, I, I think, I would still okay. stay the same. Thank you. But the the additional traffic that could come, and that's all we want to do is is have something, and and speak with our trustees that we have some kind of agreement that you know this is not going to become a thoroughfare and not become a parking lot and so on in the future. Okay. Thank you, uh, and Mr. Hope, you didn't just come on your own, right? The trustees had you. What? Okay. Okay. You didn't just come on your own. You came representing the, the township, correct? So when, when we say we want to talk to the town, township trustees, you are representing those. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the law okay. director for the township. Yes, yeah, I heard that. But I'm just reiterating that when you talk about, when he talks about wanting to talk to the trustees, you're the law director and you're representing yes. them. Yeah, yeah okay. I'd also just on that note, they did appear before the trustees in February of 2021, March of 2021, and April of 2020. At all of those trustees meetings, we listened to them. And that's what the trustees took this very seriously. And that's why they, they went out and they had a survey done so we right. could see exactly where the property was that was sought to be vacated. We did the research and we asked the attorney general for that opinion. Thank you. They're not ignoring them. That's okay. Sure. So in ant anticipation, he's, uh, I, I don't want to speak for you, but maybe what the future may look like in, in that area. So Eric, I can, can I ask you, as we talk about vacation, vacating that area, is it possible to put in the, uh, in an agreement, if we agree on vacating that it can only be used for this particular purpose or no, we're, our role is just to I, say, I'm, I'm going to look to my legal for that. Yeah. You would say no. Yeah. Uh, mm. Well, I mean, it was very clear what they said they wanted to use it for, and so. I would, you know, if I would like to get a legal opinion, maybe even for our next um, vacate that comes here. But, um, you know, I understand what you're saying also, because you really, I mean, I know what they want to do, not the, not the bumblebees with the honeybees. Okay, because I, I could tell you were getting a little offended by that. But um, just to make sure to ensure 
um, that that's going to happen. So I don't know how long that'll take. So uh, Eric, what is the timetable on if we close this hearing now? Uh, well, if, if you close the hearing now, if I'm correct, um, you would, if you close the hearing, then you would make, need to take action, whether approve mm -hmm. the vacation or not approve okay. it, or you can continue the hearing. Okay. Madam President. All right. I would, may I, may uh, I uh, just to build off of what, where you're coming from. So we, we've all heard the same thing, the concern about a road going in, but the idea that a road's not going to go in. And I agree with you that, you know, some kind of memorandum of understanding, whether it's a legal um, addition to, to this or some kind of document that would guarantee to the residents that the Knights are going to do what they say they're going to do, I think is kind of where you're headed. Um, and so if we could continue the hearing and try to figure out legally or agreement wise what that form, what, what that looks like, um, I agree that we need a little bit more time to figure that out. Okay, are you on? Yeah, I'm in agreement with additional time. Um, one, I learned a lot more today about what the issue is. Um, and what the Knights are trying to do. Um, and uh, with the, the, uh, the honeybees, um, and I won't say beehive because I don't want Beyonce's people getting involved. <laughs> but um, I just think there could be a win-win here. I think this, I don't know, I just feel like we're at the edge of maybe we could get a understanding. I don't know. Uh, like you said, how we do it uh, within our parameters of legally, we'll figure that piece out. But I just think we're, I think we're close to um, hopefully getting something that, you know, everyone could live with. So I wouldn't want to close the public hearing tip right now when I think that we could possibly uh, get to a better place uh, that uh, both of you I know are trying to get to. I don't know the answer today, but I just think there could be a a pathway to something. Okay, thank you. We do have one. Yes. Uh, when this property, it becomes state historic property also. The castle and the grounds and botanical gardens and all that is state historic property. And if we do do this, it becomes state historic property. State historic there's no road. There's no, you can't build, don't listen to that. You can't build on it. Well, we have to listen. I know. Now. I mean, but I, okay. the, the okay. people okay. that have come down and looked in the hundred yeah. foot porch and everything like that, no, you can't build a road on it. Okay. And they're not going to spend millions of dollars to build a bridge to nowhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then after it comes at all said and done, it's become state historic property. Okay. So um, we're, we're going to uh, thank you so much for your additional comments. And so we're going we're not going to close the hearing right now, um, but we do have someone on Zoom who would like to speak. Uh, Craig Babcock has raised his hand to speak. Hello, Mr. Babcock. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh -huh. OK, good. I was trying to uh, uh, type something to you, but. I'm in a, a, a residence uh, in, in proximity to the Oak, uh, or, or the Oak, uh, sorry, Willow. Uh, and we want um, no row through there because, um, I mean, it's a residential. Regi area very you know with a dead end street so it's very safe so if if um honeybees are isn't the thing we're looking for we're just m making sure that our road is safe and that is just uh, not can you can you through there? So sorry, I can't speak well, but um, I hope you get my message. Yes, yes, I do, and I you speak well enough for us to understand it. Yeah, I've got two two grandchildren on on that road, mm -hmm. and I I don't want people run, running up and down, which 
we don't right now because it's a dead end roots road in a very quiet neighborhood. Okay, well, is that it, Mr. Babcock? Yes, uh, thank okay. you. Thank you so much for calling in and taking the time. Okay, we're going to... We're, we're, I just wanted to bring up in that resolution of G26 that I gave you a copy of, the township trustees laid out certain things that had to be done to vacate the road. Okay. So when you were well, talking what about we'll the do is, yeah, that's we'll, how it was done previously was through the township at the hearing okay. before it came to the commissioners. And it wasn't a question. We'll, we'll get all that straight. Um, if, if there's things that we're confused on or not very clear uh, as, but um, I thought I thought it was uh, clear um, from our engineer and we will get an uh, opinion or um, something in writing from our prosecutor as it relates to what we had talked about, um, the use of that land. So at this time, I'd like to uh, make a motion to continue the hearing. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. So it won't be long either way. So thank you for coming. You. Okay. Okay, um, let's move, go back a little. We'll go to comments and motions of our commissioners. Um, just a few things. Um, uh, I attended uh, the CVB annual meeting, Cincinnati Visitors Bureau, and was able to speak uh, in behalf of the county. It was it's a very good meeting. They, uh, opened up their new logo and, and had everyone look at it and they explained what it was about to try to get uh, just a little change and try to attract more people to uh, its visit Cincy is the logo and to get uh, people um, attracted to young and old in every profession and to not only come here, but, but stay here. So it was a great uh, annual meeting. I also spoke as a guest speaker at Quinn Chapel AME Church uh, this past Sunday. They wanted to, to know about the county and what we've done and what people can do that are not necessarily ministers or elders, but people that are lay people in the church, people that don't have titles, how they can get involved in the community. What can they do? And I talked about uh, just getting on the boards and commissions, maybe working on uh, campaigns, maybe running for office themselves. So it was a, a great experience and I thank them for the invitation. Um, we had a legislative delegation where those uh, the, the state reps that uh, represent us up in Columbus, some of the lobbyists were there and they represent um, Hamilton County. We were uh, meeting with them to talk about what we're doing and also they talked about what they're doing also uh, to help Hamilton County. Um, the ha Hospital Tax Levy Review Committee, um, I was... Um, well, I met with them. I've been to so many of their webinars, but I met with them in my office as it relates to uh, what they're asking uh, for the levy itself. And they want to keep the levy flat at this time, but they were letting uh, me know some of the things that they are doing in the community and they're doing great things. You see and Children's Hospital reps were included. And then I was on the AARP Teletown Hall for Women and Financial Leadership. AARP of Ohio asked myself and Vice Mayor um, Jan Michelle Lemon to give some uh, pointers as it relates to financial leadership. And we had call-ins from all over Ohio, um, questions about uh, women and leadership and with this pandemic and where women are as it relates to their uh, budget and how to budget and what they can do to gain more uh, prosperity in their own lives and their families' lives. And then I attended the ribbon cutting in Lincoln Heights. Uh, Herc um, provided, they built two homes, beautiful, absolutely beautiful homes, and they're building two more. Uh, the county gave $300,000 toward, toward that effort. So we're continuing to uh, promote affordable housing, and it was just a great event. And that's all I have right now. I'll pass it over to Vice President Reese. Uh, thank you. Um, Many of the, uh, some of the things that you mentioned, uh, all three of us had a chance to, to be at. Uh, we were uh, all at the Convention Visitors Bureau uh, luncheon and uh, 
Um, certainly excited about some of the things coming back, um, opening back up, uh, because certainly uh, tourism is an economic uh, driver and it is very important to our county. Uh, was happy uh, to also uh, have them uh, feature one of our projects that we are uh, moving forward with, the uh, Black Music Walk of Fame, uh, which is a tourism infrastructure project that's being built right now uh, to create a music corridor on the banks uh, to bring in, obviously, uh, more tourists uh, to book rooms and be around. So very excited about that. Also was able to uh, uh, join my colleagues uh, at the Lincoln Heights. That was great, as uh, uh, Commissioner Dumas just said. And uh, when we talk about affordable housing, um, having these projects where you can touch them and feel them and uh, be able to walk in uh, was, is very important. Uh, we've done, uh, I think, a lot uh, of things. We started to move in the Lincoln Heights, the village of Lincoln Heights, uh, that this commission has uh has been moving forward and more is to, more is to come. Um, and I believe it's a, a African-American owned building company that uh, was the builder. So I just wanna congratulate them. It was a partnership with the Port Authority and HERC, ourselves and a number of others, uh, but certainly a positive um, partnership. Um, also, I participated uh, with my colleagues also in the uh, discussion uh, that was, uh, hosted here with our state legislative uh, delegation. And um, I thought we did a really good job honing in through the administration and through us, the importance of some of the things that we're working on. Uh, talked about a lot of different things uh, in terms of funding, uh, as well as uh, One Ohio, we talked about the impact of what's happening with the primary elections and how that's going to uh, be funded, even though they said that there is uh, funding that will be coming down. Uh, we were able to ask about uh, MSD in terms of uh, giving us the authority. We don't right now have the authority to be able to help uh, lower rates or put anything in place. And that's something we've been asking. There's some legislation that's still been tied up in Columbus. Um, and we've been asking, um, you know, it, where that is and what's the status and is that going to be moving anytime soon? So it gave us a great opportunity to have, I think, very good dialogue. And I thought we had a good, um, uh, I thought we had a good outline of what the citizens of Hamilton County needed. And I thought we brought those things forward. I also had a chance to meet with uh, representatives from UC uh, Health Hospital as well as Children's Hospital about the uh, hospital uh, levy as uh, we are looking at that as well. So yeah, just I think it's been a great, I think um, uh, our commission, we have been in some things together. And of course, we, of course we've had some other things that we've done uh, individually, but I think this week we've made some, uh, some great impact. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, the first thing I have on my list is my chief of staff, Gina Marsh is leaving, she's going back to the nonprofit sector. Um, so congratulations to you and good luck on your future endeavors. And my new chief of staff, Kevin Tai, is also in the room. He, uh, She's leaving today and he's starting today. So uh, <laughs> thank you both. Uh, and Chris Harding, of course, my aide is here as well. Um, thank you both for your past service and your future service. <laughs> um, but, and I did walk Kevin around the hall, so hopefully everyone got a chance to meet him. Thank you, Gina, for your time uh, here at the county. Can I clap for Gina? Yeah, of course. Okay. I think a lot, Gina's gotten a lot of love here in the last yeah. few days. Um, so also um, I have a proclamation and Chris, I, you have to take this soon, I know. Um, so this is a proclamation signed by all of us. It is a proclamation recognizing today as Transgender Day of Visibility. Um, there is a ceremony over at the main library and um, Chris is going to deliver this and make sure that they have this from the county and recognition they used to do and maybe they still do a transgender day of remembrance 
but a transgender day of visibility has a much more positive, um, you know, take on some of the challenges, struggles, but also opportunities for this uh, community within our county. And so I'm uh, glad to have, you might as well just take it and go, because I know it, it started, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so thank you all for signing on to that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that the county be a voice in that conversation. Um, I was gonna talk about the legislative lunch as well. Um, I, I always think those are very fruitful. Uh, there, there were a lot of issues on the table, uh, both from their side and from our side, um, but I think it's great to dialogue and make sure that our delegation understands where our priorities are and we have an understanding of uh, what they are up to and how they are advocating for, for instance, the capital budget request that we put in and, and things like that. So I, I thought that was a really beneficial lunch. Um, I uh, got to sit on a panel with the US EPA. Janet McCabe was here. She's the uh, department administrator and Green Umbrella under Ryan Mooney organized it. Um, and I, you know, you do have to sit back and think about all that the county is doing in that space to become more energy efficient, more green. And there's a lot. Uh, we're doing a lot. And so uh, I was able to communicate that uh, to the US EPA and uh, in partnership with the others in the room, including the city of Cincinnati. Uh, and then lastly, I was going to talk about Jackson Street Homes, too, in Lincoln Heights. It was a great celebration. Um, there are four houses under construction now, four more to come. Uh, but they're really beautiful, open floor plan. And I, I don't know if you guys got to walk through it, but the, the bathrooms are fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it really was nice. Um, so kudos to the port and to Herc and to Lincoln Heights, because that partnership uh, makes that project a strong one uh, and more to come, as you mm -hmm. say, in Lincoln Heights. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Little. Madam President, I have no comments today. There are uh, two by leaves on your agenda. They are related to board appointments. I will defer to you if you'd like to introduce those. Thank you so much. Certainly will. We talked earlier about uh, the importance of boards and commissions and whoever's listening out there. Uh, we do have a few vacancies, not very many, but we want you to come in and be involved and look at um, the list of boards and commissions and what your interests are and just get involved. So by leave one is a resolution reappointing one member to the Hamilton County Board of Zoning Appeals. I'd like to make a motion to adopt by leave one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Dreham. Yes. Thank you so much. And by leave two is a resolution reappointing one member to the Board of Trustees of the Zoological Society of Cincinnati. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Dreham? Yes. Thank you so much. So we're getting there. We're almost full um, with our vacancies. So next order of business is uh, our regular agenda. Our engineer is back. He has an item for us. Good afternoon mm -hmm. again. Um, and with all the recognition today, I would just like to personally recognize we have Boy Scout Troop in Anderson Township, Troop 281. We have eight scouts who will be earning their Eagle rank this Sunday. And that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Um, awesome. it, it takes them 10 to 12 years dedication to get to the rank of Eagle. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's huge. And it is huge. I just like to acknowledge awesome. that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the only item we have is item number one is uh, submitting to you the report on uh, the vacation of Willow Road. Um, we have reviewed the, the petition and the, uh, the vacation plat that was submitted. We've contacted all utilities and um, we are submitting our report to you. Uh, we have no objections to the vacation. Um, so it's, it's submitting it for, for record. Okay, thank you. I'd like, like to make a motion to uh, submit or to accept for the record the vacation report. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go to item two, MSD. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. I'm Lauren DeGarizia with MSD. We have two items on the agenda this afternoon. Uh, item number two is CSO 488 and 490, I-75 reconstruction coordination. Uh, the current request is for $973,000 in construction funding for this capital project. This project involves construction coordination with the Ohio Department of Transportation or ODOT. Uh, they are doing various improvements throughout the I-75 corridor. 
and will include MSD's um, requested improvements as part of their construction project. Uh, so they will be bidding out this project and actually constructing it, managing the construction of it in coordination with MSD. Uh, so in light of that arrangement, we've included a resolution approving and authorizing execution of an agreement with ODOT to coordinate construction and for MSD to pay for its requested improvements. Mm -hmm. um, those improvements include the installation of three storm sewer crossings um, across I-75 at Woodland Avenue, Seymour Avenue, and 69th Street, uh, as well as upsizing existing stormwater sewers located at Woodland Avenue and along Summit Road. Uh, this project will offer some immediate benefit by separating stormwater from MSD's combined sewer system, uh, improving capacity and reducing overflows at CSO 490. Uh, additionally, constructing the storm sewers across I-75 now while ODOT is completing its construction will more cost effectively position MSD for future stormwater separation, which would further improve capacity and reduce overflows at both CSOs 490 and 488. Um, and our engineering division has estimated this approach will provide an approximate $6 million in savings. Uh, lastly, while this is not a consent decree or WIP project, uh, it does provide related benefits uh, and will assist MSD in complying with those requirements. So I have um, Ryan Welsh, our deputy director here today. So we recommend approval of this and can take any questions at this time. Thank you so much. I read the write up on this. It was fairly clear. Um, and so I don't have any questions at this time. Vice President Reese. Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, I just have a comment. Um, so, uh, you know, as, as we look through the report on this one, um, you are being proactive when it comes to laying some of this pipe so that we don't have to tear up 75 more than once, right? Uh, and so I applaud that. I think that's a good thing. Um, so I just wanted to say that I'm you know, happy to support this and um, understand that some of it's perspective, but uh, I think it's prudent to do it now as opposed to doing these different pipes in different phases. I, I'm agreeing with you, Ryan. I was just going to add that it would be a lot more expensive for us to do it. Yeah. It would be a lot more expensive if we tried sure. to do this independently. It's not just digging up the road. While they've, while they're, they've got it dug up, that's, do it. that's the $6 million in savings. Yeah. So. And there's so many areas that need it, but this is a critical area for sure. So um, at this point, with no further comments, I'd like to make a motion to adopt item two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse. Yes. Thank you so much. Item, two, uh, item three. Thank you. Item number three is for the Muddy Creek FEMA property acquisition and floodplain recon excuse me, reconfiguration project. Uh, this request is also to approve construction, specifically the demolition of eight residential structures that have been acquired by MSD under this hazard mitigation grant project. Uh, as background, the Federal Emergency Management Agency or FEMA uh, awarded a hazard mitigation grant for this project to Ohio Emergency Management Agency, or OEMA, and MSD is the subrecipient of that grant. Uh, the overall purpose is to acquire through voluntary sale and demolish up to 31 residential homes that are in a flood and sewer backup prone area along Muddy Creek Road. Uh, this will mitigate further risk um, of future flood damage and SBU liability as well as provide a more naturalized floodplain to better accommodate rain events. Uh, the total project cost is 5.5 million, of which the MSD share is 1.5 million. Uh, so as I said, this current request is to authorize the demolition of the first batch of homes that we have acquired. There are eight of them. Um, and we will be back on that note with further requests as we continue to purchase more homes. We have an additional 12 right now that are just under contract. Uh, we haven't acquired them yet. So we do anticipate that we'll be back um, requesting further authorization for further demolition. And I will also note something that's a little unusual about this legislation package. We are um, not requesting additional funding through this legislation. We've budgeted so that these costs will be covered by the grant funds. Um, so we use the term appropriate in the sense that the board has accepted these grant funds and is directing them for this specific use. Um, all of MSD's local share has already been appropriated for this project. And with that, I can take any questions. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments? Yeah, I, I just, again, um, applauding you on this one too. Uh, this partnership was really important to getting this done. Mm -hmm. And I know the residents out on Muddy Creek are very grateful. So thank you for pushing this one through. 
Vice President Reed. No, no okay. comment. Yeah, Muddy Creek, I remember hearing that when I first started. So this is great, very proactive. So I'd like to make a motion to approve item three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Okay, Ryan, thanks. So you have before you uh, consent agenda items, items four through 18. Um, ho hopefully you reviewed them. Are there any questions as it relates to any of these items? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve items four through 18. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you so much. With no further business coming before us, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you.